Hey, hey, hey. I'm sure everybody's been waiting for the big reveal here. Merge official stockfish improvements shows in the upper left of the stream. We've got this steam locomotive that's been running for about a half hour here. Um, so let me just briefly walk us through what we're going to do. And then we'll do it and deal with all the fallout, the results from it. Um, so, without further ado on my part, um, yeah, I'm interested in merging official stockfish changes into my project, which my project does all the variant-enabled stockfish stuff for Atomic, for Horde Chess, for 3-Check, for King of the Hill. All that's in my project, and similar to how you have like an operating system that takes that gets patched from time to time they made all these changes or patches or improvements um, they being the official stockfish development and testing team and I'm looking to take this change and this change and this change and this change and these and all these comments and some more changes and some more comments and lots of comments and more changes and more comments and even more changes and port them all into my project. That's the objective. Um, so, to achieve that, uh, well, I probably should have logged into GitHub. Give me one minute to get logged in. So, you're going to get the lovely little loading screen again. Choo choo. Um, <laughs> sign in. Uh, if I can remember my password, we'll be in. God forbid they see how many characters it is. I know, right? You know they can hear the keystrokes. I know, they can hear that. <laughs> Not too worried. Not too worried at all. In fact, there was actually a password cracker based on hearing keystrokes. Oh, absolutely there is. So, <laughs> Not too worried. Really am not. <laughs> If somebody wants to go hack my GitHub, more power to them. I couldn't tell you why they'd want to do that, because this is just a software distribution facility. Um, so yeah, these are all the things I want to merge. Um, I did create a pull request indicating the things to be merged. And now I have to go to my command line and issue some commands. Um, so I have to go to my project, um, make sure I'm up to date, which I'm pretty sure I am. Um, okay. Yeah, may the force be with me. And also with you. Um, so, let's terminate the steam locomotive. Um, excellent. So, steam locomotive seems to be interminable. Can I. Okay, I can kill it that way. Uh, 4378. Okay. We're gonna kill it like so. There we go. Steam locomotive is no longer running. Um, yes. Make sure I've got no local changes. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, you see it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Am I in the correct directory? I am. So. It's time for me to issue these commands and see exactly what happens. Copy those to clipboard. Um, so from my project repository, I need to check out a new branch and test all the Stockfish changes. Well, here we go. We created a new branch, Official Stockfish Master. We're going to pull in all the Official Stockfish changes. Ah, I need to specify my name and email address. Give me another minute. Um, get all that set up. Yeah. This is something where I might mute the mic.
hang on, I've just reactivated my mic. So, yeah, what I was saying is that I pulled in the official Stockfish changes. These changes merged successfully, and these are in conflict. So, the official Stockfish team and I have both changed the same file. And I need to see what's changed. Um... So somewhere in here, we'll see the tag arrow, or less than, less than, less than, less than, and so forth, followed by the word head. Um, down here, we're going to see, this is what's in the official uh, stockfish. I'm trying to remember, well, okay, why did those lines of code get removed? This is the official version, is that there's none of those lines. Maybe they've moved these lines of code. No, they haven't. Or if they have moved, it's not in the same file. Um, so I'm not sure what changed there. Other than them removing some lines. Oh, they've removed these lines also here. Um... Most curious. I'll have to look through their revision history and see what in the world they did. Okay, so obviously this code that says 3-check is stuff I added. Um, and now that needs to look more like this. Um, which, okay, we need this razor margin to be an array instead of a function. And it returns an int instead of a value. Yeah, much of this has changed. Um, hmm. You know, maybe I will get rid of my version of this razor margin function. Um, maybe that's something I'm going to abandon. But without going too much further, let me see. Yeah, so this root ply is something I'd added earlier. What's probably changed here is the case of uh, root POS is now lowercase rather than uppercase. Um, and that's not to say I should get rid of root ply, but rather that root ply should be um, defined in the same scope and in the same case as where everything else is defined. Um, so let me see, where is this root POS defined? Okay, is it, it's not in any header file. It's not in any CP... That doesn't make sense. Oh, okay. I need to change directory to source. Um, and see. Root POS is defined inside thread.h. Um, uh, root POS defines the root position. And I think the deal, the reason that I ended up adding that root ply check, let me look at where it's consumed. Um, so that would be, again, in the same file where the conflict occurs. Uh, there's a reason I'm getting this value. Um, and I'm not remembering what it was. Um, I think it had something to do with accessing values and setting values in hash tables. Well, yeah, this is... Um, it, within search... Um, return that it's a draw on the first repetition, but within the game tree, return that it's a draw on the second repetition. Um, so don't prematurely evaluate something as a draw. Don't try to repeat a position um, expecting that your opponent's going to go for a threefold um, repetition just because you had the first repetition already, or you had the first um, instance of that particular position. So I'm going to keep that, but I need to figure out where I'm going to scope this root ply. 
Um, right now it's scoped inside search.h. Uh, I think inside class scope here. Oh. Okay, so we have struct root move, struct limits type, signals type, and this is just floating out here as an extern int. Um, but somehow search scope root ply finds that. What is, where is this, is search a namespace or a class? It's a namespace. Okay. Oh, namespace search starts up way at the top of the file. And presumably, yeah, here ends the namespace. Now, I noticed that root ply got moved into thread.h. Or root pos got moved into thread.h. Um, and it's a public member of thread. Um, Oh, hang on. Root moves is also here, as is root depth. So, um, I can access things in search scope from here. I could potentially, let's find out where, a oh, root move vector is a type, um, but it's defined in the scope of the thread. All right, well, let me take a look at that code, which was evaluating. Um, it was position.cpp. Yeah, here it says, if stp key is st key and so forth. Um, see, I know I'm able to get the global variable out of the namespace, but I'm not sure that I'm able to get thread instance variables out of this scope. Um, and what that means is that I might need to leave the definition of root ply where it is, still as a global in the search namespace, unless I have some way of finding and detecting it and so forth. Because um, I don't think I have access to the thread from here. Or even if I did, maybe that wouldn't be something I'd want to do. Um, now, I copied this from some other developer. And I should have kept better notes as to who I copied it from. So I could look at what they've done in order to keep this change. Um, to... well... You get the idea, so don't don't repeat moves unless it actually is to your benefit to do so. Um, you might find on the second instance of a search from a given position that it's not worth repeating. Uh, to, basically, the more time you spend searching, the more opportunities you have to find good moves. And this this comparison is so not costly. And it prevents some really dumb evaluation errors, both during the game and during analysis. So I'm going to keep that, but I just need to figure out where am I going to define this root ply thing. I see that game ply is defined here. Um, but I think that's an attribute of... Well, I don't remember. Um... Let me see where game ply is defined. Okay, it's defined in position.h. Um, so I understand that I am going to remove this root pos from global scope. Um, but I don't think that I should move root ply along with it. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Root moves did get um, translated into that thread file. So there's no harm um, 
and keeping root ply next to it. Yeah, so I'm going to keep that here. Just to be careful, I'm going to, to limit this with an if one and an end if. This is my way of keeping track of what have I changed. Um, and I'm going to try making or compiling this before um, before I start committing the resolution of this, uh, this merge. Now, do I want to keep this root ply before or after root moves? Let's keep it after. These two, um, there's no reason to split these two up. Um, there might be a reason to put the int before the data structure type. Maybe it would get packed a little bit better. Um, let's see. We got this thing called maxply right here. Uh, okay, so we're not going to use the word extern because we see the word extern got removed from the other these other two. Um, oh, hang on. We've got a depth instance called root depth. How is root depth? Okay, root depth and root ply are intimately related. Um, ply is the number of the move of the game. Depth is the search depth. Um, also, don't let me forget to change this. Um, yeah, ply and depth are pretty intimately related. This is the order that these thing these variables were listed in in the original coding. I'm going to preserve that ordering. Um, and that means that over here, I'm going to accept their change of getting rid of all three of these uh, extern definitions. Um, is there any other code that they changed in this file? No. Okay. Get status. Get. Um, so the file I just finished modifying is search.h. And now, we've got three left to resolve. We've got evaluate CPP, search CPP, and thread.h. Um, I'm going to see... Yeah, let's take a look at evaluate, because I think this is going to be relatively easy. Um, I hope. Maybe it isn't. One, two, three, four, five... Okay, this is not looking easy. Let me start at the top. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's only four changes. Um, starting at the top again. Change one. I added something. Um, and I'm confused. It looks like they added something too. Why is this a merge conflict? It's not immediately evident. Um, presumably... Eh, I don't know. I was going to say, presumably there was something right adjacent to this that got merged out successfully that has been removed. Um, one second.
Yeah, sorry about that. That means just we're going into overtime. Uh, uh, okay, did I actually change anything here? Init eval info initializes king bit boards for the given color adding pawn attacks to be done at the beginning of the evaluation. I probably added or removed a blank line. Uh, apparently that was enough to trip out stock fish. Uh, init eval and... Oh, uh, yeah, eval. I mean, I see that the function That's name the merge changed. Conflict. No, the merge conflict is that I changed something in these two lines. Mm. Or removed a line. Uh, obviously, they changed something mm. and now the method name's yeah, different. Yeah, there's, there's a blank line after the... Yeah. Yeah. But so I, I just don't understand, like, did I add or remove something? I, I don't I don't remember what I changed here. You added a blank line. No, this is their. This is the official Stockfish change. Oh. This is my latest version, including all their changes, all my changes up to the point prior to the merge. Hmm. So I must have touched something around these lines of code, but it's not telling me what. So, um, so we're gonna do that. Uh, it's gonna be good. Um, oh, okay. So here. Again, I didn't really change that much, but I must have re-indented something, whatever. So, yeah, I'm just saying if we're playing a variant, don't use the end game tables. Um, okay, I remember changing that. Holy moly. Go, 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 go. Okay, all that. That's going to be a mess and a half. Wait, where does that end? Oh, it's not very long. Oh, here it ends. Okay. We're going to come back to that one. That one looks messy. Um, yeah, no, I definitely need these new lines of code here. What? Uh, don't remember exactly what I changed, but we're going to add bonuses based on how many checks you've given. Okay. And... Here. We'll put this all the way up on the screen. We'll make this an interactive audience participation sort of thing. Read all that. Memorize it. Um, we're going to be quizzing you on that in a minute. I'm kind of joking, but if you're curious... Uh, understand that I've changed some of that. No, but seriously, so much has changed up here that the real challenge is figuring out what have they changed in the official Stockfish version and how do I integrate their changes into what we're doing for variants. That is ridiculous. That's mm -hmm. a ridiculous merge conflict. Yeah, hopefully it's Hopefully it's simple to figure out what they did and why they did it. Looks like they're not doing any of this check if the position has opposite colored bishops, and if it has opposite colored bishops, then do all this. And looks like they've just simplified this down very greatly. And maybe pushed a lot of this functionality into the endgame module. Where we're not calling the end game module anyway, so we don't care. Why do they have constant numbers in their source code? Oh. Like where it says like 12,222. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm, that's bad coding.
you know, by and large, they don't define they don't um, inline constant values. By and large, they do define constants at the top of the file. But I guess they couldn't figure out what name to give 12,222. Or 56, or 38. Mm hmm. It can be no coincidence that much of that code was removed. And much of that code used to have all these inline values. Mm -hmm. um. It's also no coincidence that those numbers show up in red. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, well, take a gander trying to read that with all the preprocessor directives and figure out what it means. I think you can figure it out. Um, if death, king of the hill, and, wait a second, okay, so that's a giant if statement. It's an if statement. Okay, that says it's not if. Yeah, it's an if statement whose condition has been modified, depending on what your preprocessor directives are. Yeah, but it's literally checking every single one of those variants. Shouldn't there be an abstracted method? You could write, yeah, you could write such an abstraction. This pattern's only used a few places. Okay. But if there were more instances of this, yeah, you'd want to define that pattern. One of the um, programming books I got, mm -hmm. people um, regard this particular developer in the Rails community extremely highly, and one of her um, tenets is to never use if statements. And it actually makes a lot of sense when you dive into it. Sure, absolutely. From an object-oriented standpoint, at least. Well, yeah, and in functional programming especially, mm -hmm. um, there's no need for if statements. You just define everything as a function. Yeah. Yeah, you want to really have that abstraction of define what you want to do, not how you want to do it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what this is saying is that um, if we're in an end game, or I'm sorry, if we're in a middle game or some phase of the game. Only apply all of this stuff if we're just playing normal chess. Um, regardless of what this stuff actually means. Oh! Wow, they got rid of the game phase check entirely. That's pretty spectacular. So they've made this generic enough that it'll work regardless of what phase of the game you're in. If you're playing an end game, middle game, opening, or something else, I guess. Oh, I think I know why they have these inline numbers like this 12222. It's because if they start defining constants at the top of the file, they'll end up with more merge conflicts. And they were in a rapid development phase where um, they were just trying to push out as many changes as possible prior to the top um, engine competition. The top computer engine contest. The TCEC. So yeah, we don't need all these endgame things and opposite colored bishop things and um do I want to do any of the stuff that we're still doing? Namely well yeah, do I want to do this uh, evaluate space? Sure. 
I think space evaluation is probably important, regardless of what variant you're playing. And let me see what else has been changed. Oh. Wow! That's amazing. All that code, plus stuff up here. Huh. I guess they must have had multiple space evaluation things. So yeah, that's the only thing. Wow, it's good to see they've simplified it. So I think the only thing I need to change, I'm just going to assume that they've removed this block up here entirely. And replaced it with this block. Um. Oh, I see. And there's now this new function, evaluate initiative. See, where is that defined? I see. Those are leftovers, or to be leftovers. Oh, no, I mean, have yeah. some if you want. All right. I'm just not hungry enough yet. Sure. But it's probably good. <laughs> it's like cheese stuff flatbread. Nice. No, it's all fair game. It's not like I went to, say, the Hancock and got a $100 steak dinner. This is a $20 Domino's order. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> No, be so hurt more if I really want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where was the thing on here to brighten the screen? Um, go to display. Up here? Uh, picture. Um. Oh. There we go. Yeah. Nice. So. It says, this is a second order bonus to be applied. Um, so far, all this seems pretty generic. Like, there's going to be a distance between the king and the center for variants that have a king. Oh. Well, that's not going to apply for one of our variants. Um, pawns. Obviously, pawns is going to be different for one of our variants, which has a lot of pawns. Um, now apply the second order bonus. Note we find the attacking side by, ex by extracting the sign of the endgame value. And that we carefully cap the bonus um, so the endgame score will never be um, divided by more than two. I guess this function sounds reasonably suitable for what we're doing. Um, so... I'm going to accept this change up down here. Um, minus one condition. If we have uh, the horde um, defined there, if we're uh, compiling with this feature enabled, we're going to have a little bit of different logic. Say if position is a horde game, um, uh, dot, dot, dot. and I think I have to add an end brace down here. It's not very elegant, but it does get the job done. And it tries to leave as much code as it was originally indented without changing it. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, this is a little bit better. Um, so there's our dividing line here. Um, so all this is going to go. That just got a lot simpler. Because now this is no longer a thing about endgames, whereby we're ignoring all kinds of endgame computation. This is a generic function that applies for all phases of the game, and we happen to know how all phases work pretty well for all variants. Um, for Horde Chess, if you're counting non-pawn material to determine if you're in an get in an endgame or not, you, did, you do that by counting the black pieces. And when black starts running out of material, then you're in an endgame. So those are all the changes. So this has been successfully merged. If I can type, nope, git add. Now let's see what remains to be done. Two files, search.cpp and thread.h. Okay, they removed these definitions and put them into thread.h, um, and I'm doing likewise. And what else? Hmm. I'm going to have to find a way to re-implement this. So this is saying if some checks have been given, increase um, our threshold for cutoff. Meaning, don't give up on searching so easily. Um, we just need to find one more check and win this game. I need to see how I can implement that, um, given that the definition of this has now changed. This used to say 512 plus 32 times depth. Uh, yeah, now I want to multiply this razor margin um, by the number of checks. Uh, plus one. Okay, so it's only used in search.cpp. And yeah, this is certainly going to find all the the conflicts are going to be in places of code that we had to change in the original instance of the code. 
Um, okay. So down here, pull me back up. So this is all pertaining to three check. Checks. That enormous big if statement got changed to an array based, more or less array based statement. Um, so let me code my changes in here, saying if, we're, if we've got three check chests, we need to do it this way, else do it the original way. And here. I need to um, need to do something magical, but what? Um, yeah, this is going to be plus expression times something, and how do I determine that? Position is three check. Um, okay. Do I already have that information collected up here somewhere? Um, yeah, this whole razor margin was used multiple times in this function. Or it's used all over the place up here. Now it is no longer. Um, okay, we're going to deal with the ramifications of the rest of this in a little bit. Um, is three check. Let's just say one plus position dot checks count. Okay, uh, and down here, again, we're going to need to do a little bit of more of the same. Uh, saying that if there are numerous checks, we have to extend our search just a little bit. Okay, where else is razor margin used? Down here. Oh, so they took the same code, they just shuffled it around a bit. I was thinking that they somehow simplified it greatly. That doesn't appear to be the case. So I'm going to repeat this code change one last time. And let the compiler worry about optimizing things, because it does better than I do anyway. file editor is kind of freaking out because the parentheses don't match up, but it also doesn't understand what preprocessor directives are. Uh, okay, so... Wait, is this razor margin used elsewhere? I don't think so. I think that's the last of that. Meaning I no longer need this definition up here to be different from the standard definition. Um, let's see, what other things have been changed in this file? Um, yeah, that's all cool. I just need to keep uh, 
uh, a reference to what's the ply of the root before we start searching. Um, not sure why that last parameter now is removed, but okay. Uh, okay, what changed here? So here I'm saying if we have no moves, um, in many cases that just means the game is decisive one way or the other. And indicate thusly as a result. Um, and what they changed here. Uh, oh, they've added a move none to the end of the list of moves. Um, just in case you don't have a move. That actually addresses use case that I thought was bothersome, but not enough to do anything about. Because I wasn't about to invent my own data structures for how to represent whether or not there was a move. Um, unfortunately, they seem to have fixed that bug as well. Or fixed the bug that I found. Um, okay. <laughs> And they did something a little clever optimization-wise here. Um, that's not going to work. We're going to need to keep this line of code. Um, in fact, maybe I changed that earlier. That looks awfully like something that I might have changed. Um, Okay, so, yeah. By default, we... Oh, here's what they changed. They changed the, this from uppercase and lowercase. That's the big concern. That's why they had to touch these lines of code. Um, in fact, they pushed this... Whatever. I shuffled some some things around there. That's all well and good. I might even looked at my code and copied it. That would be cool. Although it'd be even cooler if they gave credit for uh, for my IP. But whatever. Um, yeah, I do want to keep this statement up there. There we go. This is the ultimate expression I want to have. Meaning, make our external changes first, then do this um, derivation of what the evaluation of the position is, and then dump it all out to whatever consumes this. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> that's kind of involved. Why did they do that? Uh, wait until all threads are finished. Check if there are threads that have a better score than the main search thread. Okay, so if you found a better move, use it. That sounds like a good strategy. Why did I have to change this up here? What might I have... Ch oh, I added a comment saying you might have no move if you're searching on a terminal position. I think I'm going to leave my comment in. Um, yeah, I didn't change any functionality up there, so I can just accept this change. Um, okay. What changed here? I guess I added some code, they added some code, and we both added it in the same place. That really doesn't look like a big deal at all. I don't see any reason we couldn't have both changes. Um, I'm really confused about what might even be conflicting here. At any rate, I do want to keep my change.
because I'm going to need to know how many checks were given. Um, okay. Wait, what? What do they change here? So, they got rid of SP node. Oh. Okay. They just got rid of SP node. Meaning they're not doing the same comparison they used to do based on whether they're picking... Oh, okay. This is the whole change of where we're going to determine if we found a better move or not. They've just re they shuffled some code around to get better results. And as such, a comparison here gets removed. Um, okay, here... Uh, that sounds fine. What would I have even changed here in the first place? Yeah, no, I definitely did not change any of these lines of code. Um, I mean, maybe I did at one point and then changed it back. Because I think uh, I had to at one point. I don't remember why. Something about 960. Um, but yeah, their lines of code there look fine. Um... And variance and weakness. Okay, this has to do with trying to adjust the strength of the engine. What did they change here? I guess the word variance is not there anymore. They call it delta. It seems like a dumb name, to be perfectly blunt. Um, did I not change this from... Delta to variance? And maybe variance is the wrong word. I don't like their word delta. Um, okay, what's this? Well, I guess it's not variance, it's uh, the difference between a score and something else. And yeah, I did try adjusting uh, this to do more clever things with it. Um, ooh, this is tricky. Do I go with my... Well, my point isn't to revert my changes, it's to merge in what they have changed, and they didn't change this. I'm pretty sure that that five halves change was something I added. I'm keeping that. Um, which leaves this is the remaining this thing the to. Okay, sure. Which leaves this is the remaining thing to be merged. Um, I guess they just broke this into two statements. Why would they do that? Oh, they changed their magic formula below. Okay. Well, given that they changed their magic formula, I should revert my change now. Um, I should try this 120 times level thing and remove my customization and see if it works any better. Um, I'm curious exactly who or when or what changed this. I'm going to have to do a get blame on it around line 1600 to figure, figure that out. That sounds pretty cool. They changed their magic formula to randomize moves a little, I don't know, in a way that's more beginner friendly or something. Um, okay. This is, again, one of those things where I think the UCI move function changed and changed back. Something about chest 960. Um, so, we're going to mark that as resolved. Um, get. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to take a look at thread.h. I don't think there's any merge conflicts. Um, the only thing I added was that root ply. 
And let me make sure it's still there. That's good. Um, okay, so at this point, all source code um, has been um, reconciled. I, I'm not going to say fully merged, but I've accounted for everything they've changed and everything I've changed that were in conflict with each other. Um, just based on my reading of the code. And so I guess now we can begins the magic. So um, we'll note that make directs us to asking you what's your architecture or how do you want to build this. Um, so we're going to build this for an x86-64 modern instruction set. Um, yep. Nothing ever works perfect the first time. Um, so even though I read the code and it all looked good, something was awry. Uh, okay, so I've got to change that. Uh, it's, the variable case has changed because they relocated it um, in the code. That looks fine, as far as I can tell. Okay, I've addressed that. Um, and we're going to try to build it again. Okay, that didn't quite work. That was too optimistic. Uh, so. What I'm saying is that if we're playing on this variant, then... Let's see. Oh yeah, then uh, it's not possible to get a stalemate for... What's... Let me reread this. If the starting position is a loss for the horde, um, then, oh, is that loop nested correctly? Oh, this if statement thing? Yeah. I'm not going to change these lines of code, because if I indent them um, and they get changed by the official upstream branch, okay. then I'm going to get a merge conflict next time. Um, and I'm trying to avoid unnecessary merge conflicts if I can. But is there nothing after that else? Um, there's just this statement here. Okay, I'm really confused by how that block is... Indented? Yeah. Yeah, is well, there's, there's, there's no... Yeah, there's no better way to indent it uh, without risking a merge conflict. I'm not going to change these lines of code, Yeah. but I can't properly indent things unless I change these lines of code. I'm saying I see a nested if block, uh, and the inner one... Yeah, this here. Yeah. ...ends with an else statement. Right, and that else corresponds to this. Outside of that? Correct. Okay. Yeah. That works? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is a preprocessor directive saying just use this part of the code, but only use this part of the code... Okay, I get it now. ...if that's uh, set. All right. It's tricky stuff. I get it. <laughs> the things it looks that, ridiculous. The things that I do to avoid merge conflicts. That's, oh that's crazy. That's called technical debt. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Normally I just oh. overnight everyone else's changes. So, okay. okay, the deal is that I'm not looking at whether the player who's playing the pawns is in check, because the player who's playing the pawns or the horde has no kings, so therefore they cannot be in check. Therefore the comparison to see whether they're in check or not doesn't make any sense in that context. And so... Um, we're just going to return that um, if they lost, um, then if excluded move, return alpha. Else, because we're not in check, we're just going to return that. Um, I'm not sure if I got the right value here. I think it's fair to say while searching, if the side with the pawns is lost, um, 
Let's see. Maybe this is somewhere I can improve this. The side of the pawns has no pawns. Then, I mean, we're not even going to get to this line of code anymore now that I've changed other parts of the search. But if we were... Yeah, just return that we've lost the game. Don't return that we're drawn. There was some condition where we were returning a drawn value, and uh, it's been fixed. Um, now, my problem is that I don't seem to have access to the position of the root of the search anymore. Um, or I'm not sure where that went. Um, so, do I have any... Is this POS dot? Is that the root position? Um, well, I guess I don't need the root position, do I? Any old position will do. Uh, well, I need to check if the root position is a loss, if I remember right. For some reason I wasn't able to check that on just any old position, but I need the root position specifically. Um, so step 20, check for mate and stalemate. All legal moves have been searched, and if there are no legal moves, then must be mate or stalemate. Um, I mean, that makes sense, but... Okay, well here they're accessing this position. So this must be a valid position. So since that's a valid position, I think I can use it up here. Uh, at least since it has the correct data about the player to move. It's got to have some integrity as a data structure. Um got to be valid for them to be able to use it for that context, therefore in my context I can also use it. Okay. Find 1484. Um. <laughs> yeah, I thought this part would not be easy. Um. Obviously I can't just change that. That's not going to work. Also, uh, let me remember to get rid of my if1 statement. Um, I know that's useful for identifying what I've added, or intend to remove, or whatever, but... Um, now that I'm getting close to committing my changes, or close to running a test, verifying that the test works, and then committing, um, I don't need the if1 there, in, there anymore. Um, yeah, root ply is not a member of search. Yeah, got a little bit of bad news here, so sure. Um, this isn't a member of the search namespace. Maybe it still needs to be. Um, where is game ply defined? I know I asked that once already. Uh, cause I just don't think I have access to the thread instance here. So, that's defined over in the position. Let me take a look at this position.h. This is defined per instance of position. Whereas the root ply of a search would be defined once for uh, all positions being searched. Um, yeah, okay, so this is going to be really ugly in terms of um, how do I get, oops, how do I get access to this uh, variable? Do I need to make this global or something so I can access it?
I see there's root POS, there's root moves, and root ply, and root depth, and all these things. None of which are accessed in that particular method. Um, is there a getter method for that? No. Okay, in that same file, does anything try to access? Nope. Uh, anything about the root. Now, just my change. And that's the only thing in that entire class that tries to pay attention to uh, have we repeated something or not. So, I'm starting to think that I can't put this root ply value into the thread class. And the reason I can't is because there's no way for me to access it um, where I would need to access it. Um, so, we're taking a look at position at CPP. Now look at the broader picture of um, do I have any options here at all? Well, I could put it anywhere at this point. Um, Cause I don't think that I have visibility to the thread. Oh, hang on. There's a thing called this thread. <laughs> what about that thread? <laughs> No, not not and that the, thread. And just, the other thread. Yeah. Um, Here's a good question. Apparently, eight hundred thousand people drown every year, and if eight hundred thousand people have already drowned, does that mean I can just go breathe underwater now? Basically, for the rest of the calendar year. I mean, it depends who's giving you the numbers, right? I guess. I mean, if you're that certain about the numbers, then yeah, that's what that means. <laughs> okay, so let me see. Where do we use this is draw? Probably all over the place. <laughs> okay, only in two files. Um, and the first of those just defines the method. Um, so I could change this method's interface, um, particularly if the places where we call this from in search.cpp um, have visibility to a thread of some sort. And my goodness, I would hope that they do. Um, Oh, hang on. So where was this variable being initialized? It's being initialized inside search at CPP. Up here. See, I could put this variable just about anywhere. Are there any globals up in this file somewhere? Okay, so we got a namespace search. Yeah, I guess the search scope is actually a decent place for it. Um, meaning, I'm just going to stick it back where I found it. Because really, this attribute is an attribute of an entire search belonging to all threads. It's not an member of a thread, it's, um, it's just something that's relevant across all threads which are searching a single root position. Um, but that said, everywhere must have access to this root position, right? Main thread, okay. Okay, so there's search class methods. 
there's main thread search stuff. Oh, hang on. This is a... yeah. Main thread must be a thread. And I still should probably... Um, right. So this refers to just the pointer to the class that's running the search. Um, I am going to change that method. I'm going to change is draw. And this is now going to require a thread pointer. Um, is there anything I can do to qualify that? Like, to constant or s to make it a constant thread pointer? Um, or a thread pointer const. So this const out here means that the position's not changing. Um, I think that's probably fine. I'm going to go to is draw. That's the way that these. Uh, yeah, thread star space th is the way that they've indicated that. Oh, it's also indicated elsewhere in this. Um, oh, hang on, there's a thing called this thread. Since when did a position have a thread? Well, okay. This simplifies things. So all my worrying about we might not have visibility to a thread is kind of moot here. Because we do. Uh, this thread is simply called this thread. What's it called? Thread this thread. Okay. So, if, yeah, if I need visibility to this thread, I just, since we have it, uh, that's how we use the thread. And we don't need to go changing any method interfaces. Uh, use it elsewhere in this? Of course we do. Okay. Let's see, we've changed how these abstractions work. Um, what have I changed? Just that. Okay. And we're going to do make build arch is equal to x 664 modern. And do we have another compiler? Making progress. <clears throat> this is good. This is good progress. Um, so, at this point, I think I'm ready to test, um, okay, so there's a dot Travis dot YML. It's not something I added, and they, there's a README MD, again, it's not something I added. So, um, let's view the, um, are there anything else we want to test? Yes, we want to call Stockfish Bench to produce benchmarks. I'm mainly running this just to make sure it finishes. Um, one little trick I learned is um, try compiling this without any of the variants enabled. 
and see if we get good results again. Hang on. Where's my make command? <sighs> okay, so rebuilding everything. Oh, we got some compile errors. Checks is undefined. Uh, it's possible this has always been an issue. <laughs> and I just now noticed it. Well, no time like the present to fix it, so... Um, And I think checks given is also conditionally there. Yes, that that's all properly scoped away. Um, and let's try to. Let's continue building. Okay, so far, so good. Very good. And now, since we did, um, did change the make file, it behooves me, because, uh, more importantly, because I changed the source code itself. I should retest it with all the flags enabled. And in theory, I should test it with every single combination of those flags. Atomic, Horde, King of the Hill, and 3-check. That would be a good thing to test. Um, but... a lot of manual effort and generally it does not have very much reward because you generally compile it with either all of them or none of them enabled anyway. And if there is any compile error we can it should be pretty obvious what's going on and I can always go back and fix it pretty readily. Um, plus all the changes in source code are pretty well documented so um, Okay. All conflicts fixed, but I'm still merging. Use git commit to conclude merge. Alright, let's do it. Um, git commit. Alright. Um, next step. Oh, hang on. So next step, go back to our instructions on GitHub. We've successfully, within branched, official Stockfish Master, um, resolved merge conflicts. Next step is to upload, uh, well, to recheck out the master branch, fast forward it based on the branch where we just merged everything in it together, and upload it to GitHub. So I've clicked copy this to the clipboard. And we're going to run it. Go. Wait. Uh, okay, copying it to the clipboard wasn't exactly what we were hoping for, because... Uh, anyhow. And now we type in... Have we forgotten our username and password? Really? That doesn't seem right. Okay. Hang on. 
before I push this to GitHub, we're gonna change. Um, we're gonna. Uh, yeah, this should work. Git remote remove origin git remote add origin that's not right that's not right at all that's the wrong URL I'm not looking to push this to the official branch I'm merging this into my own project, which has its own uh, URL. So GitHub's given me bad instructions. Hang on while I get the correct instructions. There they are. Git push. Origin master. Yes. Okay. I need to go resolve um, my private keys. Apparently, um, something's not entirely right. Okay, one second while I address these technical snafus so I can upload my code. Um, oh, I have to go reobtain my private and public key pair. That's why I'm not getting authenticated. almost there. In fact, let me do that on my other terminal here, just so as not to disturb anyone. Um, so this is going to be, and while that's all going, um, we're going to give you this ever so delightful um, oh really, is that not in my history? Okay, I mean it's got to be way up here in my history somewhere. I was going to show you that nice little loading loop that I had going earlier. Where'd it go? Did I lose it? Um. Okay, I think it was while true do um, SLAE done. All right. Well, hopefully. That'll suffice for entertainment value. Um, um, okay. I'm just going to leave this little animation running while I address my technical issues. Choo choo! Okay, so we're making progress. Um, I'm going to address my private public key pair stuff here. Put all that stuff.
Okay. That's my public key. Let's get my private key and move that over. Okay, there's my private key. Um, yeah, let me just transfer the files from here because I'm pretty sure this is going to fail. to ensure that my um, uh, that my permissions are set correctly on the public and private key pair. Okay, so it needs to be 664 or 644 would work too, but 600 for the private key. Okay, so I think I've got my private public key care pair installed, and I think I can continue what we were trying to do just a second ago, which was git push origin master. Uh, and give it a super secret password. And I think this should say um, on GitHub, now that our change has been published. Um, one second. I mean, it's no big deal if people know my public key, but why would I put that on the stream? There we go. And now we can look. Um, so here's all the changes that were changed in the latest change. Um, actually kind of thinking twice about this .travis YML file. Yeah, maybe I should remove that. Looks like so, oh. that's significantly changed. Travis CI script uses compiler to overwrite CXX. Yeah, changing the make file was not my intention of this change. Unless, of course, this is how it is in the official version, but I very seriously doubt that. Uh, it appears I've taken some liberties above and beyond um, what's normally done there. Um, my, my objective was to only merge in changes from the official Stockfish. Uh, so if I compare this with the upstream file, I'm going to expect to see a difference. So this is... Um, Looking at my branch, it's got this Travis YML file. There's no way... Yeah, they... Oh, they do have this. Okay. So, I didn't goof up. 
These changes are actually part of the official Stockfish repository, even though they greatly differ from what was previously there. So yeah, Travis Continuous Integration Server is now used with Stockfish. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Can't object to that. Um, at least I can't. Okay. Uh, yeah, some values for contact checks got modified. Uh, there's not a bonus for rook contact check anymore. I don't know if there ever needed to be one, but yeah, here's everything that we changed. Um, it analyzes the enemy's safe rook contact checks. Firstly, find the end of that. Da, 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 da. Um, really, this is a much bigger deal with atomic chess, but all the moves are pretty forcing anyway. So there's no need to do static evaluations for dynamic factors. Um, yeah, a lot of things got changed upstream and got added into this release. Um, I don't claim to understand all of them, but, guys, you know what this means? This means it's time to do some more testing. I publish the changes just in case my box goes down. I'm not yet certifying that the changes completely work in every context, because such a certification would not be the same thing to do at this time. Um, however, we are uh, 73 commits ahead of official Stockfish Master. Um, and what I'm saying in that we're 73 commits ahead is that we're not any commits behind. Everything that's in official Stockfish is now in the variant supporting Stockfish engine. All that said, code is merged, it compiles, I think I understand the points where the official team changed something and I changed something and there was a conflict. And I think all of those have been resolved.